Hey you guys, what's going on? My name is Rye Read the Writer. I don't know if you guys heard this, it's been circulating on TikTok. Let me drink a little bit of my drink. Mmm. Mmm. Love this. Apple cider. Okay, so California is raising the cost of minimum wage for fast food workers. Yes, this is happening. It's starting on Monday, April the 1st, so the day after, the day after Easter, that's when it's going to happen. This was announced, I think sometime last year, that uh, California was already going to mandate this for fast food workers. Um, I know Pizza Hut was already in the, uh, was already in movement in preparation for this. I know they uh, laid off like a thousand uh, fast food pizza delivery drivers. So Pizza Hut's already ready. Uh, what do I think about California raising its food uh, minimum wage for fast food workers to twenty dollars? It's per personally, personally in California living here, it's extremely expensive. It's very, very expensive. Uh, you making? I'm gonna be honest, you guys. If you're making anything less than thirty bucks here, you're struggling. It's really, really hard. For fast food, though, like McDonald's, when I think about like people who are working those jobs, typically expected, I would think about that job for like really young adults or for um, teenagers or high schoolers. That's typically what those jobs are made for. Uh, minimum wage jobs initially were made for people who were looking for entry positions heading into the workforce and they just needed the job experience right so you paying them a lower wage sure it was low but they would get that job experience they would learn how to work for a company they would gain experience and from that job typically it would lead you to your next job and hopefully something higher and maybe you would get a trade or you would go on to something else that would pay you significantly more. What's happening in today's age is people are going to school, they're going to college, they're doing what they're supposed to do. They're working full-time jobs, but it's still not amounting as enough. And I'm seeing this especially here in California because I live in California. Majority of the time when I go to McDonald's, I don't really eat at McDonald's, but I'm just saying the times I have gone to McDonald's or to Starbucks or to, I don't really eat a lot of fast food. I'm not going to be honest with you guys. Like I, I dibble and dabble. I might do In-N-Out or Chick-fil-A, but Chick-fil-A or In-N-Out, I see a lot of grown adults, like not like your 20s and 30 year olds. I'm talking like 40s and 50s, grown adults working those jobs. Because the jobs they're working are paying them enough, so they're working a second job or a third job to make ends meet and to survive. And, and here in California, here in California, I have to say this because this is like a big thing. A lot of those jobs, those minimum wage paying jobs, I see a lot of immigrants. A lot of people who have, they speak English. Some of them don't, a lot of them don't. But they have very strong accents. And um, I know they're Latin. A lot, a lot from Mexico, but a lot of them are Latin. And uh, recently, especially where I'm at, I've seen a lot of Africans too, as well. Something I have never really seen before. But out here in California, we have an open border. Say what you like about that, but it's true. Our border is very, very open. You can cross it. And you can get a plane ticket to wherever you wanna go. You can come here to California. You can go to Denver. You can go to New York, even though New York doesn't want anybody else right now, but that's what's happening. And that's what I said. I have to be honest when I'm reporting on this because I, I am a reporter. And I have to like mention all the little facts and all the minute details, but that's what it is. A lot of people are working in these minimum wage shops or immigrants, but yeah, it's not enough to survive. There's no way you could on your own with one fast food job, let's say you're working at McDonald's and you could survive off making $15 an hour. I don't care if you're working 30 hours a week, you could do that. Hell, you, you can even do 35 hours a week. 
let's say you're the, the the fast food joint that you are working off they give you a few extra hours you can put in 35 hours a week at $15 an hour $16 an hour there's no way you're affording an apartment especially out here in California apartments out here like 13 14 where I live 16 17 for a one bedroom maybe a little living room maybe a little kitchen plus plus since you're you're not making a lot of money you're at the you're, you're below the poverty line if you're making 15 16 bucks an hour you're paying for groceries <laughs> please e even if you're going to Walmart please there's no way you're living there's no way you're going to survive like there's no way you're going to get out with that just just with groceries alone and you paying your apartment you're done you're toast <laughs> then shoot you you add in medical what medical uh let's say you want to take care of your eyes right you have eye insurance teeth you have your yeah uh, you, you, you want to go to the dentist forget about it right that's what i'm saying and, and plus you got student loans let's say you're in college as well and you're trying to pay your way through college on top of that for me when i was going through school a couple years ago two years ago it was costing me five thousand bucks uh per semester and i was paying out of pocket y'all i was <laughs> Working my ass off. <laughs> I had like three jobs. Plus I was doing lift. I, I had no life. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. When when older people who are like 50, 60, like y'all just need to work harder. No, we 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 are working hard enough. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Put a, pull up your bootstraps. No, we're we're not even wearing boots anymore. <laughs> Or like the full blown, you, you know the ones like the those pants slash shoes or whatever that fishermen wear. I'll, I'll put a picture right here. We're wearing those, those type of trousers. We're wearing like fishermen like pants. <laughs> it's it's too high. But yeah, this is thinking from a uh, economic standpoint. Just looking at it from that, uh, fast food major fast food joints are going to offset the price because them having to pay their employees four dollars more say from 16 to 20 bucks they're not going to eat the cost there's no way they're going to do that they're going to try and this is i haven't read the article or showed you guys the video yet but they're going to offset the cost you're going to pay more when you go out to eat and if you think about it it's already expensive when you do a go out to eat right now I remember there was a video circulating around on um, TikTok and they were talking about how expensive it was going to uh, McDonald's. And I tested that theory out because I'm a very curious person. I'm a Gemini, by the way. And I went to, uh, I went to in and out and I went to uh, McDonald's. I ordered orange shoes. I had a small, because I don't eat a lot, but I got a small orange shoes. My orange shoes like was about five bucks for a small orange juice. I got a hash brown because it was the morning time. My hash brown was like four bucks, y'all, for, for a nice little greasy hash brown at McDonald's. Then on top of that, I got a little breakfast sandwich and that was four bucks. But you're talking about just me going in for a simple breakfast. And back in my day, when I was a little kid, you could get breakfast for maybe like five bucks. It cost me like 21 bucks to get breakfast. And I know there's the McDonald's app and somebody was trying to explain that to me um, at the McDonald's. Like you should download it and do this and this and catch the deals. But why should I be doing all that when I just want to go to McDonald's? Why do I have to get an app and catch a sale or look for uh, days where there's specials? I just want to go in and get my orange shoes and get my hash brown. But if you're charging me 21 bucks to get a simple greasy breakfast that's I'm a big girl, you guys. I'm a big girl. A hash brown, egg sandwich, and some juice. I'm hungry in the next two, three hours. That wasn't enough for me. And I paid 21 bucks for that. So that's all I see. I can almost predict it. It's just going to um, inflate the prices for our fast food that we typically go to. Because like I said, these companies aren't going to just let the price just eat them up and allow their employees to um, just make more then on top of that like like i said with pizza hut pizza hut already cut a thousand um, driver jobs i foresee with this happening it's already it's already in process in the next 10 to 15 years we'll see more of it but 
fast food chains are going to become more and more automated. When I was at McDonald's, when I was at McDonald's, they had one person at the cashier. And other than that, they had about, let me see, there was about three towers. And each tower had about two screens, two touch screens, right? And that's how they're going to do it. You're going to go to your favorite fast food joint, McDonald's, Chick-fil-A. It's, it's happening, you guys. We're already moving into it for AI and automation and robotics. You're going to start going to your favorite fast food joints. And you're not going to be seeing people. You're going to start touching screens. You're going to be... Eventually, what's going to lead to is you're going to stand by a cubicle. And once your number is called, you're maybe going to put a receipt in a machine or something. And your order is just going to come right out once, like after four or five minutes. And eventually, that's just the way it's going to be is inside. And it's going to be like that when you're going to the um, drive through Right? You're just going to make your order outside, talk to a robot. The robot maybe may, might make mistakes, but I'm sure there's going to be maybe one or two people inside just to check. But other than that, it's everything's going to be done by robotics and AI. This is just the future. Because... Uh, <laughs> like I said, these these major franchises are going to keep paying more and more and more for employees. Could they, though? That's like another major question. Could McDonald's survive paying their customer, not customers, paying their employees more? Definitely. Absolutely. Uh, McDonald's is a franchise but it can be owned you can own your own mcdonald's they don't make a whole lot i believe they make about uh three to four hundred thousand dollars per year so it's not too too bad right so they could make a little bit less um and say like private own like a chick-fil-a or in and out yeah sure they could per se chick uh, in and out does pay pretty well they do pay their employees pretty doggone well i think they're they're already at twenty dollars an hour they're, they've been at that um but yeah i just the other ones, Pizza Hut, McDonald's, McDonald's at the bottom barrel, Subway, places like that, Quiznos. No, no, they're, they're not going to do that. So I'm going to show you guys this video that I found on TikTok. Um, it's by Fox and it's, uh, it's interviewing a woman who owns her own restaurant. Like I guess a small little mom and pop spot. And she's complaining about how the increase from 16 to 20 dollars is going to negatively impact her business. And that's another thing. Small businesses are going to get hard. Bigger businesses like McDonald's, those type of franchises, Pizza Hut, Taco Bell, they're going to make it work. They're going to offshoot the price. You're going to pay more. But the small businesses, they're already being tight squeezed. Uh, one thing I can say when I was going to school, I did take a lot of marketing classes. I was forced to though. Thank you school. Thank you college. But I did learn a lot about the fast food um, industry. One thing I did pick up is that a lot of mom and pop joints don't make as much money as you would think. And every little amount of money they do make goes right back into the business. So when we were going through the pandemic in 2020, the businesses that were hit hardest were the mom and pop restaurants. We we lost a lot of them through the pandemic. If you think about it, we're only in 2024. Here in California, the pandemic barely ended last year, about mid-summer. I would almost give it the end of last summer is when we start relaxing on wearing masks and being separated and having dividers and that's california california had very strict guidelines out here um, of how to operate during the virus season so you have mom and pop joints that firstly were cut bare bone uh, during the pandemic now that it's over now they have to get this so i feel really bad for mom and pop shops um, I don't know how they're going to survive during this time, especially the ones that own multiple. I don't know what they're going to per se do, um, but we'll see what happens, especially out here in California. But these are our policies. These are these are things that leaders we elect vote for. Like these are their policies that um, that they pick. So I don't know. I think the best thing I can say right now is, is especially in California, 
is, is if we keep voting the same way we always do, we're going to get more and more progressively left. We're going to get more policies like this and more laws and more things like this. Uh, so we'll see. But yeah, if, I mean, if you're voting for this and you live in California, somebody voted for this. Somebody voted for someone who voted for this. <laughs> All right. So we're going to watch this video. Then I'm going to read to you guys, read to you guys a article I found on NPR. So we're going to do this. All right. So get ready. I'm going to put it like right here on the screen. Okay. Okay. And boom. California's mandatory minimum wage for fast food workers will jump from 16 to $20 an hour on Monday. Businesses are scrambling to find ways to offset the extra labor costs. They say in many cases, customers will just end up eating the difference. But L.A. restaurant owner Angela Marsden, she's got a lot of concern about this and about her friends and their businesses, and she joins us now. Angela, when I was reading some of your thoughts about this, it, I have to say I felt heartbroken by it because... I know what it takes to be a small business owner, I, although I've you know, only had a, a small business on my own for a little while. It's a lot. All of that responsibility, all of that worry, and this just feels to me like you're on a knife's edge right now on whether you can continue. Dana, those of us that are still here are lucky to even be alive from COVID. We are the ones that were strong enough to be the mom and pop shops that survived COVID. And now we're hit with this and it directly impacts the small businesses. And for people to think it doesn't is crazy. We have massive layoffs that's gonna happen. I actually have a friend, his friend has seven McDonald's. She's a franchisee's owner. She's gonna be closing four of them. So we're gonna have massive layoffs, massive job losses, and when it comes to to being a mom and pop shop, if you can get $20 an hour dropping fries at McDonald's, what do you expect you want me to pay to make a nice meal or a nice hamburger? Mm -hmm. My hamburger currently is going up to 20 some dollars an hour. Reddit is $25 for a hamburger, a fries and a, a soft drink. So imagine you're going into your neighborhood pub and your hamburger and fry is now costing you $26. I mean, you it literally, Gavin Newsom, I, I hope the United States is watching. I hope he never becomes president. This man is destroying California. I, I don't understand why people can't see that he's the biggest trickster of all time. He literally, literally is saying, I'm gonna help everybody. I'm gonna give them $20 an hour. And now they're getting laid off. They're losing their jobs. And by the way, who's paying for it? It is a silent tax on the public. The public will pay for the unemployment of the people that are let go. The public will pay the $26 now for the hamburger. The lower class, middle class, upper class has been completely shut out. They can't even afford to go to McDonald's, let alone come to my place. And businesses are collapsing. Small mom and pop shops, we, I don't even know if I'll be here at the end of the year. I am working hard with my staff. I am doing everything I can to increase revenue because it's either increased revenue or I shut my kitchen down. My kitchen, who's been here since 1978, and I've cut my bookkeeper, I've cut my hours. I have a girlfriend that doesn't even have food. She just has straight liquor. She's trying to sell. She's not even making money. She's looking for a job while she's trying to sell her business. Mm -hmm. It is literally making way for corporations and big like conglomerates. People with a lot of money will be able to have a business, but your mom and pop shops, they were, they're not gonna exist. And, and, and Dana, that board, I'm being told that he put to oversee is planning on getting the minimum wage up to $25 an hour in two years. People need to wake up. This is like when you go out uh, to the circus and the guy has a big fancy trick he's showing you. Meanwhile, somebody is stealing all the money out of your pocket because this tax is being passed on to the consumer. It is a silent, hefty tax and it is creating a wealthy and a poor. We we have no middle class left and I, I don't know I don't know what LA is gonna look like a year from now I, I or two years from now even all the mom and pops are we still gonna be here I, I most of them I talk to are not making SBA payments so by the way taxpayers now the SBA loans are gonna go in default and that's gonna be on the taxpayers too so I, I don't I don't know the end game here Dana I, I, I don't understand yeah, well, you heard it. She sounds super pissed. 
But I do want to touch on a few things that she did say before I start the article. Uh, yeah, we can 100% fully expect job losses, reduction in hours for employees. You can't have your cake and eat it too, I'm sorry. You're going to see a lot of, um, especially if you do work in fast food, especially during the slower seasons. We're headed towards summer. It might pick up maybe, but not throughout the whole entire day. A company might look at the percentage like they might go, okay, in the mornings we're a little bit busy, so we're going to have staff there. But those mid-afternoon slow hours, you might see one person at the register, one, one or maybe two people back in the kitchen, and one person who's responsible for cleaning and maintaining um, the restaurant, like at fast food joints especially. What restaurants, like bigger ones, like uh, hers, I have no idea what they're going to do because you, you could only cut so many employees before it becomes a problem. So I don't know, this is, this is going to be a situation. On one hand, it's going to be good for employees. You guys are going to make more money. Uh, if you're making $16 an hour and you get bumped up to 20, that's like maybe about $100, maybe $120 per paycheck. Let me do the math. About like 100 bucks per paycheck. That can make a really huge difference. You difference you gaining 100 or even a 200 bucks per paycheck. Um, that's like the difference for some people between like not surviving and surviving. It's not a whole lot of money, but it means a lot to a young person or an adult who um is on like a cliff <laughs> they're barely they're barely surviving on the other hand like i said it's going to hit restaurants extremely hard another thing that she mentioned was the off shooting of cost how customers were going to pick a, pick up on it and uh she mentioned how a burger would cost 26 bucks it's already costing 26 bucks at her restaurant right now i can't remember how much she mentioned fries and a drink but 26 bucks for a burger, right? <laughs> I don't care how good that burger is. 26 bucks for a cheese burger. I don't know. Because it's not just the burger. It's the burger. It's the fries. It's you getting drinks, right? It's maybe you trying an appetizer. You also got to pay then you're getting taxed while you're sitting down and eating because out here in America, you get taxed for everything. Then now you got a tip. And sometimes with um, some of these places, they have built-in tips, but now server will also like a tip as well. So you're tipping twice in some instances. I've been to those places where on the receipt, they'll have like a tip fee or like a wait service fee. Then you tip on top of that. So it's like you're giving like double, triple plus taxes that fee then you're paying them which is insane so you might be like say on a small date like i hang out with a couple of my friends um i love treating my friends i'm a my love language is acts of service i might tip one of my friends up me and her might go out for dinner i'm like 26 bucks it costs it's gonna cost 26 bucks for my burger i'm paying for her burger so it's another 26 bucks so what we're at 40 46 so we're at like 50 bucks just for the burgers fries might be an extended price because they might break that up might not be any more specials anymore so we're looking at 60 70 bucks for a burger and fries then you got to get something to drink because that's weird right i'm not drinking water when i'm eating a burger i'm drinking some soda i might i could do water but still i'm drinking i'm drinking like some sprite or some ginger ale so the drink is gonna cost me like another five bucks Plus, after that, tip, maybe dessert, depending on how much I like my friend. <laughs> Shout out my friend, though. This friend knows who she is. Uh, but yeah, like, I, I'm, go I'm going out for a burger. This is 100 bucks. This is, it's so easy for this to be a 100 buck experience. Just two people going out for burgers. No, ma'am. I'm sorry. I will not be eating at her restaurant. And that sucks for her business, but I'm not paying that much for a burger. I'm still mad that I paid $21 at McDonald's for breakfast. Hell no! Y'all are tripping with these prices, but this isn't helping the situation. All right, so I'm going to read this article. It's by NPR. It's titled, California Fast Food Workers 
will get $20 minimum wage starting on Monday. It's coming up. It's coming up. Okay. California fast food workers cooking Big Macs and whipping Frappuccinos. Their Frappuccinos are so good at McDonald's. No cap. No cap. But, man, I'm allergic to, um... I'm lactose intolerant, y'all. I don't be eating. I don't be drinking frappuccinos. Though. I'll be loving them, but I'm like, man, do I, how how bloated do I want to be? <laughs> I have to weigh that sometimes. Do I, how cute do I want to be when I'm outside, or do I do I look pregnant when I'm walking around swollen? Uh, okay, so frappuccinos will be will start making a minimum wage of twenty dollars an hour on Monday. For many, this means a twenty five percent raise. The new state medium uniquely focuses on a particular segment, fast food, affecting some of the country's biggest chains, including McDonald's, Starbucks, Subway, and Pizza Hut. This is not really going to affect me. No cap. I don't, I don't really eat at McDonald's. I'm done with McDonald's. Starbucks. I haven't been to Starbucks in a year. It's been, it has been a year. It has nothing to do with the boycott, though, but... um. It's just their prices. I'm not paying seven bucks for coffee. It's crazy. Eight bucks in some instances. And Subway, bro. A Subway sandwich used to cost five bucks. What happened to the five bucks Subway? It, it even had a song. I'm, I'm not going to sing it. I'm sorry, you guys. My voice. <laughs> Y'all don't want to hear me sing on this channel. I, I don't want to do that to you guys. Uh, but yeah, Subway used to have a $5 foot long. Now it's 12 bucks. 12 bucks. I paid 12 bucks for a foot long and it was okay. It really was okay. And pizza too. All right. It's a big win for cooks, cashiers, and other fast food workers. Some of the lowest paid jobs in the U.S. whose wages have been growing at a faster clip since the pandemic after de decades of stagnation. California is one of the country's most expensive states. About half a million people are estimated to work in fast food here. Damn. Mostly women. Immigrants. I told you guys. I told you. Like, I didn't even have to read this. I didn't even have to read this article. I already knew. I already knew. I'm, I'm smart. I'm too smart. Women, immigrants, and people of color. Damn, I'm black. <laughs> and I'm a woman. <laughs> uh, many live below the poverty line. Definitely. Sandra J from Sacramento is counting down the days for her first bigger paycheck in two weeks. After 18 years of working, damn, that's a long time. That's like all my life. Working at several Jack in a Box franchises, her pay will jump from $17.50 to $20. That's not bad. Two, two bucks more? That's not bad. That means she could be bringing home another $120 each paycheck. That's not bad. That's not too bad. It's not bad. It's super great, says Jay. 52. Yeah, look. See? Older adults. I see that a lot in California. These aren't kids anymore. This isn't like it was back in the early 90s. And I wasn't I wasn't really around for that. But in the early 2000s or the 2010s. Where it was a whole bunch of kids working at these minimum wage jobs. It's a whole bunch of adults who have full-time job or three four because it's four at four now minimum wage jobs plus lyft and uber and grubhub and the walmart um what is it shop and go or whatever it's called they're doing that they're working multiple jobs to afford rent food health insurance their kids call college fees it's it's so many things that you're paying taxes here in California. Then you have to do registration and car insurance. You gotta buy a car and cars out here cost twenty, thirty thousand dollars for for uh, like a Kia Rio or something small. I'm not dissing Kias, but you know what I mean? Like a Kia Rio, like twenty, thirty thousand. You know, you know what I mean? It's just like, man, it's it's everything. But yeah, Jay's 52 speaking in Spanish at the immigrant at the very least. It'll give me some breathing room. It'll make it easier to pay the rent and other bills. Yeah, it's going to help. It's going to help him. Okay, so Chipotle McDonald's warn of price hikes. Less work. McDonald's don't do it. <laughs> I don't I don't want I don't want to 
threaten you with these hands, these paws. But McDonald's, don't, don't you dare, McDonald's, look at me in my face, McDonald's, don't you dare raise those prices, McDonald's. <laughs> McDonald's, stop. Come on, McDonald's, stop. Why, why am I paying five bucks for a hash brown? I like your hash browns. They're so greasy though, but McDonald's, why? Stop McDonald's. It costs too much. Really. Br bring back the dollar menu, McDonald's. Bring it back. We we want that. Bring back the dollar menu. Stop playing around. You play around too much. And uh, Chipotle, I don't even eat there. Okay, so, but the dramatic pay raise has also touched off a heated debate about the impact on local businesses. Smaller franchise restaurant owners warn they'll have to raise prices, reduce work hours, like I said, cut jobs, and even close shop. And that's another thing I did, I did not mention. You're going to see a lot more restaurants closing their shops earlier and they're going to open up later to survive. Like, like it was during the pandemic times. Um, where I lived, it was so weird. I'm telling you, 2020 was such a weird time. And it was weirder in 2021. 20, we were playing games. We didn't know what was going on. And no cap, I was still outside. I, <laughs> I didn't know, I was still outside. I was, I was just living my best life. But 2020, 21, out here in California, McDonald's and a lot of restaurants would close about 8, 8 p.m. They would shut down. That's weird for us because normally those shops would be open 24 hours. There was a time, 2019, that was my, I think my sophomore year of college, my sophomore, 2000, no, 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 I'm playing. My junior year, 2019, junior to, no, no, junior to senior, it was in between that, right? I would get off school about 10 p.m. o'clock at night and I would go to like an in and out or um, I would go to McDonald's. It would be 12 o'clock midnight and the place would be packed out with young people doing homework, eating McDonald's, eating at in and out outside doing homework, just chilling, kicking it. 2021, nothing. Everything was shut down at eight. But that's what we're, we're headed towards. They're going to, like they said, raise prices, reduce worker hours, cut jobs, positions that don't need to be filled. It was good for the employees, but the the franchise is going to look at it and go like, now nah, we don't really need that. We're going to cut that. And also they're going to close shop earlier. So you're going to notice a lot of restaurants, uh, really popular McDonald's and spots like those. They're going to close a lot more earlier. Mark my words. California's pay hike is a result of the continuous deal struck by labor leader, leaders, including the large service employees, international union, and fast food companies last year. The new wage law laws applies to fast food chains with at 60 locations nationwide with exemptions for some bakeries, interesting bakeries, huh? and smaller fast food outposts inside grocery stores, airports, and other venues. Okay, so, so some people got away with it. But several fast food executives have suggested prices would go up to 2.5 and 3.5 to offset higher wages. Jack in a Box, Starbucks, McDonald's, and Chipotle have warned of upcoming price hikes. That's on top of price increases many restaurants have been rolling out for months. So okay, so they've already been doing it but they're gonna do it more, you're gonna see it. But yeah, that's enough, you guys. I don't really need to read more of it because that's really just the gist of it. And I know a lot of uh, people at restaurants are probably like, employees are probably like celebrating the um, pain increase, but I'm telling you, it's, it's all going to be a whole snowball effect. You're gonna get paid more, but it's gonna be cut because these companies, they worry about their bottom line. I'm always gonna say until the day I die, it's not about you. It's about the company's bottom line. It's about the people who are investors in the company, who own stocks. They have, the companies, the CEOs have an obligation to these stockholders. They have to make sure that every quarter they're making more and more and more money. 
So if they've been told by the state they have to pay their employees more, what they're going to do is they're going to cut costs wherever they can so that margin line, even if it dips a little lower, it'll dip a little lower, but they have to continue keep raising it. So it's, it's kind of like what happened at, uh, what is it? Was it UPS that was on that major strike? I believe it was UPS. And um, they had a, uh, they, they, their union, they unionized. They already had a union, but they got together. They protested for better wages, for better um, working conditions, which they absolutely deserved. And they actually won. But when they won, UPS fired a whole bunch of people. A whole bunch of people got fired. And that's just the way these things go. You know, and the same thing happened uh, with um, all these writers. Same thing. They protested for better wages, for better working conditions. They got them. As soon as they got them, boom, less movies, less people that were going to hire to be on set, and less need for workers. So the offset is going to be put on you guys, the customers, and slowly the employees. Employees who are being squeezed are going to get squeezed more at these major restaurants. I promise you guys, this is how it's going to go. It's everything is a domino effect. So, you know, you're going to you're going to make more money, but down the line, you got to pay for it. <laughs> so y'all going to feel it. And that's what I'm saying. Y'all who are working at these fast food joints, you think you're working hard now. Imagine working somewhere and you're at a point where it's a skeleton crew. And I've worked those jobs where it's one cook, one server, one person on register and you guys rotate and the manager's there. And when you guys got to close up and you guys got to clean up the kitchen, it's going to be you by yourself and a manager clean. <laughs> that's that's just what we're leading towards. So I don't know. We'll see. But someone voted for this. Someone wanted this. Someone passed this. Um, but yeah, you guys enjoy your um, new pay. 20 bucks. Yeah, enjoy it. Enjoy it. All right. That concludes the video for today. I hope you like it. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Um, also, down below in the comment section, tell me how do you feel about the minimum wage in California for fast food joints being increased $20 minimum wage because it's happening on Monday. How do you feel about that? And uh, do you think it's a good idea? Do you think it's a bad idea? Do you think the fast food employees deserve to make more? Uh, do you work at a fast food joint? Are you excited about the pay increase? What do you think is going to be the long term outcome? And do you, are you okay with paying $26 for a burger? Like, is that, it can't just be me, but are you okay? Like, really, like, who, who's going to go on dates? <laughs> who, who's going to take anyone on a date? <laughs> like, and I pay. Like, I like to take my friends out, like I said, but I'm like, man, <laughs> man, I'm, I'm going to be cooking at home. I really am. I'm, I'm going to be cooking at home. But are y'all about to pay 26 bucks 26 bucks for a burger are you ready for it okay let me know in the comment section i gotta go